Scientists at Ag Research are examining the relative intake of milk to pasture by young deer to understand their growth rates around weaning time. They're trying to establish whether checks in growth rates immediately after weaning are due to an underdeveloped rumen. What we've done over about the last five years is have a program that has looked at a number of questions based on how the hind performs and what drives her lactational performance and how the calf performs. And so we've looked at things like uh, how does a, a hind produce milk for a hybrid calf versus a normal red calf. Um, we've looked at different forage types and we've looked at different feed qualities. And so we're around about the fifth stage where we're now looking at actual amounts of feed offered and how short can the grass be before you start to see some interactions. One of the specific areas that we're interested in looking at uh, the, the weaning period and any checks that come after the weaning period are how does their intake during lactation actually impact on them. So if the hind is producing a lot of milk, does that mean that the calf doesn't eat very much grass and will go through a bigger check when it's weaned than, than, a, car, than a calf that's, that's on a hind that's producing not quite so much milk and is having to forage for itself before we get to weaning? What the deer farmers tell us is that there are a lot of the things that they do don't make any difference on the weaning weight of the calf, but they do see a big difference in post-weaning growth performance. And so that's why we've had to go back and say, well, we've looked a lot of the weaning strategies and different feed types after weaning, but really we're starting to think that it's what they're doing in that January and February period and how much grass they're eating and how well their rumen's developing as to what happens immediately after weaning what we're finding is that the hinds on very low allowances are definitely losing a lot more weight than those on adequate or what we would consider adequate allowances, while the calves are relatively pretty much the same. So the calf is, looks like it is using the hind as a buffer, so they, they're milking the, the hind out harder when, when the feed is, is more scarce. Previous research that we've done would show that poorer conditioned animals will conceive later, so therefore their calves will be born later, the calves will be smaller and the whole cycle sets in. So getting hinds um, in adequate body condition at, at calving to be, able to, to be able to milk well, I think is, is one of the important messages that come across, out of here. And also, um, I guess, the rationale behind why we supplement animals. So in, in this case, anyway, uh, we'd really be supplementing the animal to maintain hind condition and protect next year's production. 32, We're measuring milk intake, we measure pasture intake of the hind, pasture intake of the calf, and look at the whole dynamic between the two. So as we go through it, when the calf's first born, the calf's diet is probably three quarter to 100% to milk. And then of course over time that changes, so probably by about March, pre-rut type of weaning, we were looking at probably a quarter of the energy is coming from milk and three quarters of the energy is coming from pasture intake of the calf. So it's really trying to understand what's driving that system, where, where the calf growth is coming from energetically. At peak lactation, the red hind with the red calf on her is probably delivering about three litres of milk a day and a uh, red hind with a, a wapiti cross calf on it will be delivering up to four litres of milk a day, which has some real impacts in terms of the body condition of that hind, and so we, we really need to make sure we look after that hind and into that system. It's a good system, but we need to feed them to get their potential. The farmers will be able to use this type of information almost as a cornerstone for developing their own feeding programmes, and also we hope for breeding programmes as well, because some of the early work will be around how the genetics of the calf is actually driving the hind's lactational performance. And that, that has huge implications to the farmer in terms of what size that he chooses um, and, and therefore what sort of potential he can get out of his hinds. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.